What's up guys, welcome to your 14th Pi game tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to move objects on your screen diagonally. So let's go ahead and the first thing we need to be a boo 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 build is starting points for our object. So let's give it a X of zero and also might as well give it a Y of zero. And after that, we need to build our clock object again and set it equal to clock pi game dot time dot clock with a capital C at the end. And this will allow us to use the clock. Next we need to set speeds for both the Y axis and the X axis. So let's go ahead and put speed X, sounds like a drug, 150 and speed Y, which is also speedy in case you didn't know, let's set it equal to like 170 or something. So this is all the variables and objects we're going to be working with. So now that we got that taken care of, let's go ahead and build our, uh, well, what we need to build. So right under your for loop, um, go ahead and first thing we want to do is blitz background to screen. So screen blitz background and of course put it zero zero so it fits nicely. The next thing we want to do is blitz the ball to the screen. So let's go ahead and type screen blitz ball and instead of coordinates such as numbers we want to give it an X and Y because um, this ball is going to be moving around so we want to give it dynamic coordinates so the coordinates will change so after this we can begin working with our clock so let's first get that millisecond I talked about and this will give you clock dot tick and this will make um, a millisecond equal to one milli or excuse me milli equal to one millisecond so regardless of how fast your loop goes um, milli is going to be equal to one millisecond on every computer so let's go ahead and convert that to seconds by taking millisecond milli and dividing it by a thousand dot to get that floating point number I talked about that last time so now we got one millisecond stored in that seconds so let's go ahead and find the distance moved for coordinate x so put dmx sounds like a rap group because it is uh, seconds spell it right seconds multiplied by speed x and what this will do is take that one millisecond and times it by however fast is going and that's how uh, what the distance your ball moves x direction and dmy and set it equal to seconds again times uh, speed y aka speedy and this will take um, the speed it moves times one millisecond in the in the distance it moves in that millisecond is stored in distance of y so now we can go ahead and after we calculated um, the distance uh, we can go ahead and change that variable so x plus equals dmx and y plus equals dmy but now the last thing we have to do is this is going to move our ball across the screen but once it gets to the edge of the screen um, it's going to keep going so we want to say alright when you get to the edge of the screen start back again so we have something nice to look at so if x and remember this is the width if it's greater than 640 because my window is a uh, 640 by 360 um, what do we want you to do? We want you to reset to zero or go back. And um, let me scroll down. If y is greater than 360, so if it goes off the screen in the y direction, we want you to reset so we uh, can look at you again. So let me go ahead and run this. Hopefully, I don't have any errors. And looking good. And here is our finished program right here. As you see, whenever our ball goes back in either the X direction goes back um, off the screen this way it starts over here and whenever it gets to the bottom of the screen it starts back at the top again so that is uh, the basics of how you can change both the X and Y coordinate at the same time to get diagonal movement and a couple things you probably want to remember don't forget the, uh, that decimal point right there and also don't forget that you're using separate variables for X and Y all across your program and as long as you remember those two things, you should be good to go. So that is that for diagonal movement. 
Um, I hope you guys learned a little something, but not too much. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. What's up, guys? It's Bucky, and welcome to your 15th Pi Game tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to be going over something called a vector. Now, what a vector is, is, is pretty much the line that connects two points. So if you had a point in the top left corner and a point in the bottom right corner, it would be that imaginary line between those two points. So a vector has two main um, attributes. It has both a distance between those points and it also has a direction from point A to point B. And we're going to be working with vectors because it's really important when you're building games for 2D games and it's um, especially important important when we're going to be building 3D games in the future. So these next couple uh, series of tutorials is going to be going over vectors and it's going to seem like a pain now but I'll make it real easy for you and trust me when we're building our 3D graphics um, you're definitely going to need to know this so that's why. Now most people when they build vectors um, they put it they pretty much build a class for the vector because we're going to be doing a bunch of different functions to it so we're going to want its own class so we can uh, use those functions easily so go ahead and build a class again I deleted every single thing um, for my last tutorial so go ahead and build a class and actually let me open up my there we go and uh, you can name it anything you want I'm going to go ahead and just name mine vector and for your parameter of course put object and we're only going to be building uh, one function or method in this um, this is the initialization uh, function so go ahead and def underscore underscore init underscore underscore and this is um, in case you never bought built an initialization function for whenever we create an instance of this class this is what it does automatically so whenever we create an instance we're gonna pass it three parameters and I know I didn't tell you guys before I probably should have all this function is gonna do is calculate the difference from point A to point B so we need the self um, parameter first which is um, pretty much the instance and then list one and list two since we're gonna be passing it two list or two coordinates and it's gonna calculate the difference so let's do that right now make um, a variable called self diff which is gonna be um, in other words our instance uh, dot diff you'll see what it is later on you should know this if you watch my uh, Python tutorials and the formula for calculating uh, the distance or vector between two coordinates is the first thing we have to do is take the first coordinate of our second list so list two and zero because remember the first one is zero I know that's confusing minus list one zero so this is going to give us our our difference between um, the first point and now to get the difference between the second point go list two one here we go minus list one one make sure I got that right list two zero one zero two one 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 so what this is going to do is take the first coordinate from our second list actually I'll tell you whenever I uh, make a list so anyways um, after we get done calculating that we're just going to want to print out our answer so print self diff and now that's the only thing we need to build in our class for now we only have one function and it's our constructor function so next let's go ahead and make a list and then after I do this you're gonna see what's going on uh, make a list called a and I know that um, I call a list a tuple but just deal with it and we'll make it like 20.0 for the first coordinate 25.0 for the second one make another point which is B and set this equal to something like 40.0 and also 55.0 so these would represent points A and B 20.0 would be 20 over 25 down and B would be 40 over 55 down 
So let's go ahead and after this, what we want to do is create an instance of our class. So just name it thing or whatever you want and set it equal to your class name with your parameters being A and B. And what this is going to do is take um, the A coordinate or excuse me, A point and B point and pass them in here and calculate the difference. And I'll show you guys um, after I run it how this does it. Let's go ahead and run the module, click OK, and we're going to get, uh, oh man, you can almost see it. We're going to get 20 and 30. So what this did is calculated 40 minus 20, which was 20, and 55 minus 25, which was 30. Now let me show you guys visually how this does it. Um, this is represents list 1, since it's the verse first variable passed in is A and B represents list 2 so whenever you see list 2 it's B so list 2 the first coordinate is 40 minus list 1 the first coordinate which is 20 so that's what gives you the 20 and in list 2 the second coordinate which is 55 minus list 1 the second coordinate which is 25 this gives you the 30 so that's your real basics on how to build a vector class and I know it might seem confusing for now but after you watch me do this a couple times or you practice with it it's going to be a lot easier so um, play around with that and probably once you build it you're going to understand what's going on but if not I'll clear things up for you in the next couple tutorials so thank you guys for watching and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time